Welcome back to PSC Stack By. Today we keep on talking about the PMP Core SDK library, and specifically I want to explain you how you can query data using PMP Core SDK. In fact, in PMP Core SDK we have different querying flavors. You can load data into the domain model that you already have in memory. You can get data into a new variable uh, uh, based on the domain model types that we provide with PMP Core SDK. Or you can use the language integrated query model to query collection of objects. As well as uh, you can eventually use the hierarchical or nested queries uh, to include additional complex uh, collections or properties in a query of a parent type. Moreover, there are other options like, uh, for example, the continuous paging or the cascading load that you can use whenever you want to create a really advanced queries. From an inner working point of view, uh, with PMP Core SDK, we always use uh, batching by default when we make queries so that uh, we can improve performances, reduce the number of round trips to the REST APIs that we are going to consume, and avoid as much as we can uh, throttling issues. And again, remember that PMP Core SDK internally is graph first, and it relies on the SharePoint REST APIs just as a fallback whenever there is any not yet available functionality in Microsoft Graph. So let me move to the demo environment. Let me show you how to play with the query model of PMP Core SDK. So here is the official documentation page about how to request data using the Microsoft 365 PMP Core SDK library. And let me switch uh, to the uh, demo application that I've built for you. Let me explain you how you can play with the query model. So, for example, here we create a PMP context object using the PMP context factory that we provide in PMP Core SDK. And we can simply and easily use the load async method to load a bunch of properties using these lambda expressions to declare the properties that we want to load. And those properties will be loaded into the web object that we have in the current context. So that we can simply say then context.web.title, for example, to read the property that we just loaded using the load async. There is also the synchronous method, so the load, but I suggest you and I invite you to uh, give priority to the asynchronous model when you develop your solutions. There is also the capability to do the load and load async with batching so that you can provide a specific batch that you want to use when you load the data. But by default, the load async will do batching for you under the cover and will simply load the declared properties into the target object in the current context. Once you have done that, here we load, for example, the collection of lists in the current web of the context. You can also browse the lists. And if you do that and you want to use the list that you just loaded in memory with this load async method, you need to specify the dot as requested extension method to query and to uh, go through all of the lists that you already have in memory in the current web object in the current context. Otherwise, if you will make just a for each on any collection in PMP Core SDK, the result will be a live query executed under the cover for you using the query model of PMP Core SDK. This is to give you always the latest and fresh data whenever you browse a collection of items like a collection of lists or a collection of messages in a chat in Teams or stuff like that. Moreover, you can also play with the language integrated query uh, syntax. So you can use the query extension methods. There are some out of the box so query methods supported, as well as uh, some custom methods that we introduced in PMP Core SDK. Here, we use the current context, the web in the current context, and the collection of lists. And again, we use that collection to order the results by title using a Lambda expression and to query, specifically query just the ID and the title of all of the lists. So the result will be a new uh, collection in memory that you can uh, use. And actually this object will, will be just the iQueryable object, so the uh, query uh, definition. And whenever you will go through all of the items with a for each or a to list or a to array, we will execute the query in that point in time so that you can use and reuse the same query multiple times. And whenever you will browse the query, you will get fresh results based on the query that you previously defined. 
If you want, you can also use the link query syntax. So, for example, from L in current context.web.lists, you specify a constraint about the template type of the list, for example, using an enumerable type that we have in PMP Core SDK in our domain model, you order by title and you select the items. And once you have done that, you apply the custom extension method that we provide, the query properties, which will simply load the title and the ID of all of the lists matching the query criteria that you define with this link query. Once you've done that, again, this query list link object is just the query expression tree, and you will go through all of the items whenever you will do a for each or a to list or a to array, and then you will be able to get back the results. Last but not least, there is the get model. When you use the get model, you do a get synchronous or a get async, which is the asynchronous model and the suggested one. And again, you can also use the uh, batching model if you want but by default we always use batching inside these methods, but using the batch one you can specify your own custom batch if you want. But here we simply make a get asynchronously, we retrieve the uh, properties title and the collection of lists of the current web, including the ID and the title only of the lists, and we get the result in a new web object which will not be the context.web object, but a new one that you can use for whatever reason, because maybe you want to keep a copy of the web object with these specific properties stored in this new web object. And once you've done that, again, you can query the properties that you uh, retrieved, or you can use the as requested collection of list that you have got uh, making this query. So really, really simple syntax. I can even execute this application to show you the result, even if it is more important to understand the idea under the cover. So here we make the very first request. So we get the title and the collection of lists in the current web in the context. And here we have, we get the title and we get the collection of lists. Then we make another uh, query but now, as you can see, first uh, we use the as requested. Now we go through the collection, and so we make another REST query to get the new collection of lists. Then we make the link query ordered by title. And here we are, we make another REST query, and we get the collection of lists ordered by title with ID and uh, title as the result. And then we will have uh, the query filtered by template type, so we will just get back the document libraries, and here we are, we just get them still ordered by title. And uh, the last one will be the query to get uh, the web object, so we will get the title, as you see here, as well as uh, the collection of lists, uh, getting just the ID and the title of every single list uh, in the web object that we will create on the fly for you. So, this is a very useful and powerful query model, and it is up to you, based on what you want to do, to use the load or the get model, or to use the language integrated model if you want to play with complex queries against collection of objects in the domain model of PMP Core SDK. Like always, thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it interesting, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you next week. And remember, like always, to subscribe to this channel. Thank you!